Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And the topic for this week is about Fuzzy Phil, and we've got some tips for Fuzzy Phil, which is, of course, one of the most exciting new features from our last update in the Floriani software. And so if you're ready to get started, let's go ahead and um, move on to uh, looking at my Floriani workspace. And so here you'll see I've got um, the letters TC up on my screen. And those, of course, came from the asset file uh, that puts the letters into your library, right? I've got my fonts with the Academy fuzzy letters in there. And um, then I can just come to my, you know, designs tab and bring them in. Well, these are ones that were prepared, you know, all for us, you know, by Floriani and RNK. Um, but that said, the tool to make your own fuzzy fill is very easy to use. And so if you wanted to make your own, you would need a shape to fill in with this cool kind of fuzzy fill effect. And um, I want to say uh, everyone at RNK was just so pleased with uh, the response to fuzzy fill. Um, I was noticing a lot of people posting pictures on social media. Um, I thought I would show a couple of them just for fun. Um, this is, of course, the, um, you know, the cool Academy font that, it, um, you know, I was just showing you guys. And that's the letters that I made for my jacket. And you might recall I did a video on how you can make your own interlocking, you know, fuzzy fill letters in a previous video. Um, but then I started noticing when I was traveling, cool fuzzy fill samples at the different stores that I was visiting. And just on Facebook in general, people like Linda, that really um, quickly got going and showing, you know, who would have thought of a fuzzy snowman, but isn't that awesome, right? And so great job to everybody, Virginia, and um, all the people that I kind of snatched a picture from. So basically, these were from my Facebook, um, you know, when I was, you know, sort of checking out the groups and the pages. And um, I mean, who would have thought to do flowers and a fuzzy fill on the flowers? But um, apparently Linda did. And so thanks so much for showing them. Linda did a ton of fuzzy fill samples. And, but a bunch of people really um, put samples. It was uh, great to see all of these different uses for the fuzzy fill. And what I really like about them is I can see some of them have got different settings. And I thought it would be fun today to talk about the settings, the fuzzy fill settings that you can control to make your own sort of fuzzy fill texture, you know, and you can really learn about it if you do a little bit of testing. And I'm all about the test. I love to make tests. So shout out to all the people um, here that I um, noticed your pictures on Facebook. I'm sure I didn't notice them all, but the ones that I did notice were just so darn cute. And look at that. Um, you know, fuzzy fill to, uh, with the, for the bear, you know, how cool is that? And then the matching bear. So what a great job to make a pillow for your bear. Anyway, you guys, and the bells, oh, you guys, I, I would have never thought to use fuzzy fill for the bears, but it just seems to work in so many cool places. And so how do you get started, Trevor, if we want to make our own fuzzy fill design? And the first thing I want to say is, I guess, maybe a dose of patience, right? Because if I start a new window, and let's just say I grab a piece of artwork from my custom shape library, because if you don't know by now, with Floriani, you always have to have a shape, right? It's what we would kind of call artwork-based embroidery. You've got the shape of a banana. Um, you know, I don't know why it comes in purple like that, but I could make it be a yellow banana just by clicking on it. But if I want to fill it in with thread, then, of course, we have all the different styles of embroidery at the bottom. And while a run stitch outline could be like almost instantaneous and even a fill would be like in almost instant, the fuzzy fill, you wait, you know, when you click on fuzzy fill and I'm just going to point out, I'm going to click on it now. And so notice my cursor is spinning. And so we might as well just go ahead and talk about this for a minute because it's going to work for a while. And so we'll wait, you know, because, and I, I, um, I noticed when I was prepping for the video that it took a couple of minutes, you know, so um, that was, you know, the first lesson was that 
um, if you click on the fuzzy fill, be prepared to wait because it might you might as well go grab a coffee, you know, and come back and it'll be done. Um, but I figured some tips out uh, that I could help with that. You know, some can make it any faster, Trevor. And the answer is you can't, you know, and maybe it's in hindsight. Yeah, you know, we use the default setting is the same setting that's used in the puff in the letters for for the jacket, which creates quite a dense look. It's it's probably the maximum, you know, that we put in the, the setting where you get the maximum amount of the fuzzy fill. But the point is, um, you can change those settings. And when the tool first became available, um, I made a whole bunch of different tests, you know, and these were, I'm not going to kind of go into it, but just look at how many different test sheets that I made where, um, can you see what I'm like, I'm adjusting the different numbers because there's quite a few. And so when my software finishes making the fuzzy fill and it's still working, I can see the cur. You can tell it's working because the cursor is like an hourglass that's spinning. So it's still working. These are all different tests that I did. And um, and then, of course, uh, we provided the tool to all of the Floriani educators and they made tests. And so there it's done. You see that? Yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun making tests and I learned a lot about the tool. Now, you don't have to make all these tests to learn about the tool, but I can kind of give you the, I want to break it down for you guys. So let's go back now that my software is ready for me. Um, you can see the, you know, we made a fuzzy banana, you know, and I, I'm not sure you wanted a fuzzy banana, but it doesn't sound the most appealing, but it kind of looks pretty cool, actually. Um, so here's the first tip, right? Um, if you adjust the settings, and so when I click on this, notice all the settings here, and there's like I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things that you can adjust. And the one that will affect it the most, the one that I think we already have turned down to quite a close level, is the fuzzy density at 1.5. Um, if I was going to adjust that anything, I'd make it probably a bigger number. Let's try 2.5, and then just click Apply. And let it work now remember how long it took for it to do the fuzzy when the setting was 1.5 um now you can kind of see the difference where you know it's done uh, you know just by adjusting the setting from to 2.5 so i think maybe what we could talk about is in a future update we'll adjust the density setting for that to be a lower number and then if you know you want kind of the maximum effect you can always turn it up um and so we kind of um just i wanted you to know that you know if you if you're making your own the thing is when um when you click on the tool down here it gives you the default setting so there's not really an easy uh way to for some reason presets are not available here so that's another sort of feedback that we'll give is you know could we make a preset by right clicking because normally we can right click and set a preset um so the other thing i was going to say was if you want to make something and you want to uh you know, let's say you're going to do a banana and you don't want to wait so long. Oh, OK, I got an idea. Let's bring in the artwork for the banana. But before we click on the fill, let's make it smaller, you know, not, not so big. Then when I fill it in, it doesn't take so long to do it because it doesn't. there's not so much fuzzy fill to make. You know, the bigger it is, the longer it takes. So now that I've made it, I could adjust the setting. Oh, OK, we'll do a 2.5 instead of a 1.5. So it'll be like hardly anything showing, but now I can make my banana big again and it doesn't take too long to generate the stitches. So I don't know if that's at all helpful, but um, I thought that that was kind of a unique perspective on it was just try starting out with a smaller size. And then uh, if you're going to adjust the settings, I mean, if you're planning on having sort of that full density sort of 1.5 setting, then it's not you don't need to do any of this you just click the button be prepared to wait um but even at 2.5 i did wait a little bit um the thing that's you know what is the way you might be able to understand this help i guess a little bit is if i click on this banana and i'll make a copy of it and instead of doing it as a fuzzy fill i'm going to click on stipple fill so auto stipple um, as you know, we'll, we'll kind of take a meandering sort of path and walk around to fill in a shape. And one of the um, 
settings of it is the density. And see, so this is a setting of one of 2.5. So fuzzy fill is kind of like a stipple, only the path that it takes is called the fuzzy density. And then along that path, instead of a straight stitch, the fuzzy fill does a fuzzy stitch. You know, it does a zigzag that goes back and forth. And so, first of all, notice when I do this stipple, if I set that to 1.5 and then click apply, see how, and it takes a moment to do even just that, and see how close together that path is. So literally when you do a fuzzy fill with a 1.5 density, it's doing that much filling in of the area, but along that path, it's of course doing this um, crazy zigzags on a stitch. So it becomes quite a bit of stitches, right? Look at the difference, you know, the auto stipple of this banana is 3000 and the auto, the, the fuzzy fill one's 6,500. It's quite a bit more. Um, so, okay, so that's something we can learn about it is that you can adjust the number. And if I make it four, well, then it's much wider. And so if I do the fuzzy density at four, now we're starting to see a lot, you know, more defined. I can see the lines, you know. And if you take the width, the path width set at five, let's turn that down to two. And now you're really breaking it down, you know, and you can start to see what it is. And maybe that's something that you would find really cool. And that, that could be a totally different look for the fuzzy fill. So I think really the point here is you saw a lot of great samples made by a lot of really talented people, but most of them seemed like the default setting, you know, and that's where I was thinking today, maybe I could inspire you guys to do something a little more with it. Now, if that's too much and it makes your brain hurt, I'm sorry, then you should stick to just you know the basic default settings and there's nothing wrong with that you can take a letter take a banana take an apple and click on the fill and get the fuzzy fill with the default settings it does take time there's just a lot of math involved in doing that kind of you know special stitching like that that's why it takes long the better your math coprocessor is probably the faster it goes if you got a little bit older computer you might be waiting even longer than mine but you saw how long it took for me and so it probably takes about that long for you guys so don't be surprised when it does um, I just want to say that my favorite sample was the one when I started trying different kinds of thread. You know, variegated thread makes a whole nother look to the fuzzy fill. And then I got into doing two levels. So I started doing opening up the spacing and then sewing it into color. So I'll copy and paste and do a pink one and a blue one. And so check out this sample here. I've got in the top, it's got blue thread with pink on top. And in the bottom, it's got pink thread with blue on top. And so that is a great example of after you kind of learn to adjust those settings and have perhaps a lighter. So now I need the fuzzy fill to be more open so you can see the, the second, you know, two fuzzy fills. So there's a couple more settings before I let you guys go for today. I'll just go back to full screen again one more time. And just to kind of highlight in on the actual settings again in the properties box here. Um, so the main one at the top was the density. You can inset your pro, um, shape. So if we copy and paste and then make the pasted one an artwork, you kind of see that it, you know, it, it fills in the shape, but it's not at all times here. Let's make that darker, Trevor. At, at all times, it's not getting really close to the shape. And that's where you have the ability to do the inset. So if I select that banana again, and it's got an inset at zero, well, you could turn that up, you know, and make it be closer to or even beyond that line. And so those are settings that you can adjust. Each one of these settings is a random factor so it's set at 90 right now. If you turn that down, it will become more organized looking and it'll take more of a unified look to it. Maybe that's exactly the look you're trying to achieve. And so this is such a cool tool because there are so many ways you can make it look. Um, notice the next option says number of passes and it's set to two. Well, you could turn that back to one. And so one will do one pass around the shape 
two says go again and kind of offset them a little bit so they aren't just walking exactly down the same road twice but it does around the horn and back again so you get more of it you know so you can do two and um so the width of the path we talked about that's kind of how wide those are so once you get this op this more open then if you take your path width back more open it starts to get more fuzzy again and what can i say you kind of get what it looks like on screen and so um go ahead and play with these settings and if you come up with something cool post it on social media because you know that everybody's watching and um or if you're not there send an email we love to hear from you guys so um all that said you guys i hope you enjoyed this week's rnk software clubs video for the week um until next week have a great day thanks for listening and bye